So Cardano has just hit a major milestone and in this video, I'll talk about why it is so important for Cardano and where we are headed from here. But before coming to it, let's take a quick overview of the overall crypto market. So after the major sell-off in recent days, it appears that the crypto market is back on track as it has surged by almost 5% in the last 24 hours. The overall market cap is now just shy of $2.4 trillion with the total crypto market volume increasing by 12% over the last 24 hours. Meanwhile, Bitcoin finally managed to climb back above $50,000 as traders comb through the wreckage of last week's flash crash. Bitcoin has bounced back above its 200-day moving average after slumping as much as 22% during last week. And talking about the recent flash crash, a crypto quant recently highlighted how the on-chain indication of Bitcoin exchange reserves differs between the current fall and the one in May as per this post, the all exchanges reserve is a Bitcoin indicator that indicates the total quantity of coins currently stored in all exchanges wallets. If the value of the metric increases, it indicates that investors are transferring their coins to exchanges. And it is observed that holders typically send their Bitcoin to exchange wallets in order to cash out in currency or purchase altcoins. As a result, such a pattern could be considered bearish for the coin. On the other hand, a decrease in the exchange reserve indicates that holders are withdrawing Bitcoin to personal wallets. Due to the fact that investors typically do this for the aim of holding, this type of trend is considered bullish for Bitcoin. And as Bitcoin exchange reserves have been increasing in the months preceding the crash, this indicates that global reserves have been falling for some time now. So this is the point at which the present market differs from the May market. And the quant indicates that, as a result of this trend, Bitcoin remains bullish in the medium or long run, unless reserves reverse course. All in all, it appears that Bitcoin is not in a bearish trend and since it has already gained some momentum, it is highly likely that it will move up in the coming days. And now coming to Cardano, its price analysis is also bullish as it is trading in sync with Bitcoin, which is looking good after the recent slump. In the last 24 hours, Cardano has surged by more than 10%, resulting in an intraday high of $1.4. And it appears that the bears have lost their grip after overwhelming the entire market since last week. So it is expected that the bulls will continue to keep going in record for their upsides in the coming trading sessions. Hence, I'm anticipating Cardano to record further highs and witness a significant surge from here. In addition, things are now looking better for Cardano since it has recently surpassed the milestone of 1 million staking wallets. This was the first significant milestone for Cardano since September's much-hyped Alonzo Hard Fork. The founder, Charles Hoskinson, celebrated the achievement with his Twitter followers via a screenshot of his staking wallet statistics and the number of active pools. So it appears that with more crypto users quickly recognizing the benefits of staking and the risks associated with actively trading in the unpredictable platforms, the majority of them are now resorting to staking Cardano. Meanwhile, the Alonzo hard fork in September added support for smart contracts, enabling a slew of new possibilities in the decentralized finance sector. And due to Cardano's late debut into the decentralized finance industry, critics have continued to be suspicious of its impact, although Charles Hoskinson has maintained throughout that the focus is on producing a trustworthy product rather than a gimmick. All in all, Cardano has quickly established a foothold in the decentralized finance ecosystem, attracting an increasing number of stakers and dApp support. And I think that the increasing popularity of Cardano staking demonstrates its growing importance in the definite blockchain ecosystem. So as I said, things are looking good for Cardano, and this may lead to massive gains for it by the end of December. In any case, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think Cardano is going to surge in the coming days? Let me know in the comment section below. And with that being said, let's see some important crypto updates before I come back to Cardano. So Gemini, a New York-based crypto exchange, has recently announced plans to expand into Latin America via a collaboration with Colombia's largest bank, Bank Colombia. And as per the official announcement, this collaboration will allow Colombian customers to trade four crypto assets, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash. In addition, the collaboration will take place as part of a year-long pilot initiative being conducted by Colombia's financial regulator, the Superintendencia Financiera de Colombia. 
And since it is starting as a pilot program, a limited number of users will be able to buy crypto directly from their Bancolombia bank accounts through the Gemini Exchange, which will provide crypto-specific infrastructure for exchange and custody of assets. All in all, this collaboration is critical for the development of the crypto industry in Colombia as it will allow Colombians to engage in crypto trading without any hurdles, eventually increasing crypto adoption in the country. And talking about crypto adoption, we are now seeing that Australians are adopting cryptos at a rapid pace. And according to the 2021 Independent Reserves Cryptocurrency Index, the percentage of Australians who own or have owned crypto has increased to 29% this year, up from 18% in 2020. The findings imply that the sector's growth is being fueled by the positive experiences of crypto owners, with 8-9% of respondents reporting that they had made money or broken even, up from 78% in 2020. And seeing this, I think that this trend will continue as crypto matures and becomes less volatile. I believe it is very reasonable for more people to get interested in an asset class that is clearly outperforming the broader market. Similarly, according to a report by Grayscale Investments, more than 26% of U.S. investors surveyed claimed they already held Bitcoin, and around 46% of this set of owners also held Ethereum and Dogecoin in their accounts. Additionally, 77% of respondents indicated that they would likely obtain exposure to Bitcoin via an ETF. The survey gathered 1,000 household respondents aged 25 to 64 and each household had at least $10,000 in investable assets with a household income of at least 50k. The survey also revealed that the majority of crypto investors make their investments through a trading app or directly through a crypto exchange, and almost no one invests in Bitcoin via a traditional self-brokerage or industry professional. All in all, this survey is yet another example showing the dramatic adoption of cryptos. Meanwhile, Nasdaq Stockholm has announced the listing of 21 shares, first two physically backed ETN on the Swedish stock exchange. The two securities, which are backed by Bitcoin and Ethereum, establish a new sector for ETN, a sort of unsecured debt product that monitors an underlying index of stocks and is traded on a major exchange. In addition, as the new ETN would provide investors with exposure to cryptos such as Bitcoin and Ethereum, this is yet another development leading to rising crypto adoption. Moreover, we are now seeing that the number of crypto-based funds continues to grow across Europe as 2022 approaches. And as per another report, China's crackdown on Bitcoin miners and crypto firms has altered the global Bitcoin ecosystem's geography. As evidence of this, Foundry USA Pool, a Bitcoin mining pool based in the United States, has eclipsed all other Bitcoin mining pools in China to become the world's largest Bitcoin mining pool. This demonstrates that the U.S. has been gaining ground in mining after years of Chinese supremacy. Additionally, this is the first time in history that a U.S. pool has held the top spot in Bitcoin mining. All in all, this indicates that the United States has become a popular destination for miners after the China crypto ban. And now coming to our next update, we already know that a lot of crypto scams have emerged recently. And to counter this, the European Union ambassadors recently agree on a mandate to engage with the European Parliament on a proposal to revise existing regulations governing the disclosure of information accompanying financial transfers. The modification intends to broaden the regulation's application to some crypto assets. The proposal's objective is to require crypto service providers to gather and make publicly available complete information about the sender and beneficiary of all virtual or crypto asset transfers they facilitate. The objective is to secure the traceability of crypto transfers in order to facilitate the identification of potentially suspicious transactions and, if required, their blockage. So as I said, a lot of crypto scams have emerged recently and I think this is a positive development that will aim to mitigate all crypto-related fraudulent activities. And now coming back to Cardano, it is currently looking good in terms of its value as it had a swift recovery in the last 24 hours. While its technical analysis shows that a stiff resistance level is present around $1.5, the social value is off the charts, hinting at a massive interest from retail. And with Cardano recently hitting the 1 million staking wallets milestone, things are now coming up rather good for it. So I think we will be witnessing positive trading of Cardano in the coming trading sessions.